All right, we're uh, back at CryptoBlockCon, day two in Las Vegas, Mandalay Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're with Mirav Ozer. Mm -hmm. She is the founder of CryptoNerve. And uh, well, welcome to Smart Team TV. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, so tell us about uh, CryptoNerve and what is it that you do? What's your background? Okay. Tell us about a little bit about yourself. Okay, so <clears throat> I have a PhD in finance uh -huh. uh, from Stern Business School NYU. I have been uh, working, researching financial markets for many years. Yeah. Uh, mainly the traditional markets, what you consider like equity, FX. Um, and for the past couple of years or more, or more I, I started focusing on the crypto market because I got very much intrigued uh, in understanding uh, whether there are any similarities or differences between the crypto market and traditional markets and how they behave, how they interact. I mean, if I can see some patterns or uh, factors and things like that. So that's how I started it. Okay. Um, and then when I, I mean, investigated more and more, I realized that it's similar and not similar. Similar in the sense that, I mean, not similar in the sense you know that it, it looks very much like the FX market because it's global, it's 24 7. Right. It's traded in pairs because it's all relative. It's, you can say Bitcoin, Bitcoin compared to what? To the dollar, to Ethereum, to what? It's very much like, you know, the US dollar, you can say just the US dollar is, uh -huh. is, is in terms of what? Right. Australian dollar, Euro. Same idea. Right. I mean, it doesn't doesn't stand on its own. Okay. Um, so in that sense, they are the same. But unlike the FX market, which is very much uh, impacted by a lot of macroeconomic events, uh -huh. uh, we can see that you know if there is um, let's say um, uh, like unemployment or GDP or sentiment, uh, consumer sentiment, things like that. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, there are immediately there are some jumps or declines of, of the, whether it's the US to Euro, Euro to, US, to the US, depending on where the information is coming from. Right. Um, and um, so, and that is understandable because you, the, the fiat, fiat currency is, is attached to an economy. Right. So, um, and uh, there are all kinds of monetary policies and fiscal policies that are going to drive the this currency because in somewhat it's a reflection of that economy if you think about Venezuela uh -huh. <laughs> I mean the currency is useless because the country is going bankrupt right so from the same and this is so it's understandable that all these macro events and macro indicators are affecting the fiat currency hmm. you won't see the cryptocurrency is a f that it's affected by these macroeconomic events and factors. There's none of that. I mean, the GDP can do whatever, the unemployment can do whatever. Right. It's like, who cares? Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, you see a lot of uh, uh, the, the crypto market, uh, the cryptocurrency is very much driven by things like sentiment and momentum. Mm. So, from you know, a researcher perspective, someone who was and under, understand how this market works. If it's mostly sentiment and momentum, then that tells me that most of the action is speculative. Hmm. There's no value, none whatsoever. Right. Nothing. Okay. It's all speculative. If I'm, if all, if all what I care about is sentiment that okay, everyone is going up, everyone is going down, or everyone is happy, or everyone is unhappy. Or I'm going and follow you some kind of a momentum. There's just speculation because I have no idea what the value is. Mm. Either I don't care or I just don't know. Right. <laughs> Either yeah. way, it's speculative. Yeah. So, and starting from that point, that I understand that everything is so speculative, I felt like there's a need for some valuation framework. Mm. Okay. Because any market has speculative. Right. Some speculative. I mean, I, I mean, we, we can we can deny that whether it's equity market, the FX market, the bond market. You're always gonna ask, uh, speculators. Of course. But they always, but in any market, there's some kind of imbalance when, between the speculators and and some value investors, people that are investing because of they believe in either the company or they want to invest in the, in the bond or 
they even in the FX market. I mean, sometimes I want to invest because I believe in the dollar or I yeah. believe in the euro or for whatever reason. Um, so it's not just speculators, mm. but the crypto market. It seems to me that it's like 99.9 percent. It's all speculation because there's no value. Mm. Um, because no one understands the value. Right. You don't know what the value is, and there aren't any models out there. Yeah. People may claim they know something. Yeah. But I haven't seen anything that is worthwhile looking at. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. And there's no valuation network uh, uh, framework. Right. There are no metrics that you can see that you can, uh, uh, I mean, mention like with its uh, whether you are in, uh, evaluating a bond or evaluating a. a Company or even evaluating, you know, um, uh, the the uh, fiat currency. I mean, you can understand, you know, if you are comparing economy to economy, you can understand more or less what are the relationships. Right. You have some idea where it is going. Something that you have no idea with the crypto market. So you did have like a uh, 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 like a workshop on valuation. Mm -hmm. It was like a three-hour workshop or, or three and a half hours or something along those lines. And uh, uh, obviously, you know, you don't have the time to talk about right. all of it, but very high level, very briefly, what is it that you can use or people can use uh, when they're valuing, say, a Bitcoin or some of the ICO tokens or something along those lines? I'm assuming you, you touched upon a, a bunch of those. Uh, well, I don't know if you can talk about it in, in, in a minute, but, uh, no, you know. No, probably not in a minute. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's very complex. I mean, of course. First of all, we have to start uh, with the, the understanding that each and every coin represent a project. Right. And that's what's missing in the in the market, the crypto market, because they it's behaving now as if, you know, we are here in Las Vegas, right? So as people like, you know, I don't know, bought some chips and they're, you know, going to these uh, tables and they're betting on something. So this is how it looks like. Hmm. Because no one understands that each and every token represents something. Right. And even when I run the, the workshop and I was asking people, okay, so what does the token represent? So they were talking about marketing, they were talking about raising money. <laughs> they didn't even mention once that it represents a project. Right. I mean, this is what it's supposed to represent. It, yeah. It's, it's give you some rights to do something <coughs> on this network or platform mm. or to receive something, hmm. right? right? I mean, that's the idea. It's yeah. very much like a token or whatever token or coin is, is very much like, like having like a share of, of, a, of a company or having like a unit of bond. Mm. It represents something. Uh, gives you, I mean, the share gives you the right for some profit in, in the company. The bonds give you the right to collect the debt at the end of uh, the maturity and, and everything. But sure. So, it get, I mean, that's what it represents. And yeah. that's exactly the tokens are also representing, okay, not the company or, or bond, but they represent something, some rights within this product that they are connected to. Mm -hmm. And that's what is missing because everyone forgot about this project that... It, I mean, this is where it's all started. Right. I mean, the collective, they issued these tokens in order to build this, but the tokens are not just, you know, not connected to the project. I mean, yes, maybe the, 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 the platform for the majority of these ICOs haven't been built yet, but the idea is that you can, when it is built, yeah. you can use them in order to have some rights on how to uh, receive services, pay for services or, or products on, on this network. Mm. And that's what always people are forgetting. And therefore, when you think about each and every token, you have to think about first about, okay, what project is it connected to? And then think, okay, what do I think about this project? Mm -hmm. Very much like any business model, right. how do I think I'm supposed to, to evaluate that, that project? So and kind of like does, uh, valuing it, uh, valuing an IPO almost for right. the most part, right? I mean, why would that be any different? Right. Just because it runs on the blockchain, that that means that I shouldn't think about it. Yeah, that it has no value of anything. Or, uh -huh. I mean, I I have to think about it this way because, it, I mean, this token is supposed to be 
uh, useful for some for, for some purpose, right? Right. It's not just you know for marketing and 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 and, <laughs> and trying to fund my my product. Or right. It's it's supposed to, I'm supposed to do something with it. I yes. Mean, because what kind of an incentive do I have? Mm. But because we forgot that. All what people are doing now with this token is as a speculating on it's going up, it's going down, it's going up, it's going down. They forgot, you know, that you're supposed to do something with it. There's mm. a usage for this. Right. And this is why it's behaving the way it's behaving. It's all speculative. Exactly. And I want to bring them back to why we, in, why we are issuing these tokens. Mm. Yeah. What are the initial, the intended purpose? Mm. It's like Bitcoin, the entire purpose was peer-to-peer -peer payment. Right. It wasn't for speculation yeah. or hedging, which people are doing right now. Right. It was for peer-to-peer -peer payments. Right. Period. Yes. And that's not what it's used for anymore. No. Not. The, the majority of it is just, you know, speculations and hedging and building strategies or whatever and, and all kinds of other things that are, you know, going around it. Right. And, and this is unfortunate, and this is why the, the crypto market looks the way that it looks, because we deviated completely from the purpose, and the purpose is where the value is. Mm. This is what I call the economic value of that network. Mm. So the economic value of Bitcoin, for, for example, is supposed to be the transaction, the peer-to-peer -peer transaction. This is the intended, this is where the economic value is gonna come from. Mm. From this transaction that people are going to transact with that, pay with that, for whatever reason, give it as a gift. I mean, right. You can do whatever you want, but at least that's the intended purpose. Not to hedge or speculate in, yeah. the, in the crypto market. And that's how we have to think about any type of, of, of coin. Mm. From that perspective. Right. I mean, okay, so Ethereum also has a purpose, right? I uh -huh. mean, it's supposed to, uh, I mean, they came up with this idea of smart contracts that you can basically code any business model and in, in, in an automatic way execute any any business model. That right. was the idea. Right. With some logic, right? Yeah. I mean, every business has some logic. You put it like in a code and automatically it is executed. That's the idea. And this is why you build all these kind of applications that use this kind of different, have, have different business models and use this uh, ERC-20. Right. But, I mean, I mean, people just abused, I mean, the ICO, some of the ICOs abused that idea of the ERC-20 to just say, okay, let's just build something. Yeah. We don't know what it's going to do. Let's right. just build something. But that was not the purpose. Yeah. The purpose was, okay, I mean, if you really have a business model and you really want to automate that, then use our platform, the ERC-20, and build something that will be useful. And then people can have their own token and and um, use uh, use for um, to paying for a service or on that uh, for, for that business or receiving a service or something like that, mm. uh, and that is completely missed. And I, what I'm trying to do is to bring back people to the core, mm. to what the model. I mean, what the project's supposed to do. Right. Very much like if you want to invest in Apple, I know that a lot of people also speculate with Apple. Yeah. But the idea is that, you know, if it has a value, the value has to be in the fundamentals of that company. Right. Whether it's Apple or it's Google or GM or whatever company, right? And eventually it's going to converge, right? I mean, it can speculate, but eventually it's going to converge to that value, the, the actual value. Mm. Because we and we know somehow, I mean, there's a range of what the value is supposed to be. I right. Mean, it cannot be anything between zero to a million. Yeah. It, you know, okay, it can be between, let's say, um, I don't know, a hundred uh, to two hundred and fifty. Yeah. But not yeah. that much of a range. Right. Right. As right. of now, when you look at the crypto market, every, I mean, the, even the, the, yeah, I mean, the people are saying, oh, valuations could be exactly. anything. Exactly. I mean, some some are saying, oh, Bitcoin is going to be like. 20 million, uh, 20,000. I mean, I, I even heard that like, there's an assessment that Bitcoin is going to be like in 2020, like 100,000. Right. 100,000, 500,000. You know, come people, up with this? I people don't know. draw out all kinds of numbers. Exactly. So numbers are going everywhere. Right. And no one knows. Yeah. It's, specu it's speculation. Right. And it shouldn't be this way. And this is why there are all, all kinds of um, uh, criticism. 
mm-hmm. on the crypto uh, market is because they're saying, oh, it's all speculative, it's all scam, it's all this. And that's unfortunate because we're missing the point of why we even started the, all this idea with blockchain and, and crypto and, and right. why we even started with with the first pilot of, of, of blockchain, which was Bitcoin, which right. was the first use case. Right. And the first use case was peer-to-peer payment. Right. I mean, then we realized, oh, okay, blockchain is, is can be useful for other things. Yeah. So they, and we came up with Ethereum, and there's EOS, and there's NEO, and there's Zcash, and there are all kind of yeah. others that you say, okay, I mean, it's not just for this, it could be used for other things. For other things, absolutely. But we don't think about the use cases, we forgot that there is a use case. And we all want to think about is like... People want to get rich quick, basically, exactly, for the most part. You know, exactly, so that's and all that's, that's, that's unfortunate because it, it's, it's kind of like put everything, I mean, the entire, uh, I, I, the way I see it is like, it put like completely like, it masks the purpose. It mm. masks what the, the real thing of what it's supposed to do. And with that, uh, we, we, we getting like, um, uh, I mean, we may we may deviate into into places where we shouldn't, mm. and instead of of focusing on what's good, I mean now the regulators and everybody else is only focusing about how to catch the bad actors right. instead of thinking about oh how can we make it better. Right. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. And, yeah. and I, I believe that if I be able to bring it to the consciousness of of the, of the public that there is a value and uh, and create like a develop this framework and have people understand how the framework works and understand what is the value and what it represents then maybe we can bring some common sense to the nonsense <laughs> and then maybe we won't need the regulators uh, to hold our hand and tell us what to do what not to do okay so I'm sure we can just talk about this. I'm sure you can talk about this all day. Yeah. But uh, there's, you know, I'm sure you've got other things to do. But thanks for stopping by. Thank so you very much for having me. Absolutely. You know, we let's continue that conversation uh, some other time. But that was Mirav Ozer. Uh, she's founder of Crypto Nerve. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. Yeah.